Hello, my Sock Universe has been a long and intense day. And yeah, I find now the chance to talk about what happened in the Premier League and the Eredivisie over the weekend. Spoiler alert, I barely watched Eredivisie. I didn't see anything of Eredivisie, but I watched at least the results. So uh, that will be rather short. And since it's a long day, I also, you know, I will not go into all the detail because by now, if you have, if you followed the Premier League, you have heard anyway the more in the most of the stuff. Either people yell about VAR or about incredible results or both in cases. I decided to, although many choices, I decided to put Leicester up there and I'll wear Liverpool. We will see that for the first time this season Liverpool now is projected to land ahead of Manchester City. So that prompts that choice. We'll start though with the City rival uh, who had a horrible game at Brighton and somehow got out windows, uh, uh, came out as winners. Blind robbery, almost, one is um, tempted to say. Mope gave Brighton the lead at a time when I think they should already have scored at least one. They hit the woodwork, I think, twice in the first half and four times in the second. Something like that. I mean, an incredible amount of woodwork hits. Um, the problem is that with the first shot on goal, um, Manchester United equalized. It wasn't even their own player. It was Dunk who kind of deflected. I mean, um, Maguire was in there as well. Really, really weird. Uh, Rashford has a goal this on the 52nd, but in the 55th, uh, that was a second shot, shot and goal. But the way he slalomed through the defense and you know got around everyone was a really well taken goal, and it's. 2-1 for United and then the big barrage of woodwork hits by Brighton came who played great had United on the ropes should have at least gotten a draw they get the equalizer in the 95th minute and you think everything is fine the game ends and then VAR gets involved and this is one thing that yes it is possible and maybe the booth should have said to the referee you know Please don't blow the whistle yet. Um, we're looking at something here. It was a handball and Fernandez steps up in the stoppage time of the stoppage time. After the game ended, converts a penalty and wins it for Manchester United, who really don't know how they won that match. Bit lucky also was the win of Everton against Crystal Palace, although you have to say Everton really looks good. They have the third win in the third game and yeah, I'm already looking Everton shirts, although I have to say a Wolves and a Aston Villa shirt a little bit higher on my list, but if Everton continues like that, they keep climbing. Uh, Calvert Lewin scores the first goal where it was all orchestrated by uh, James. It's wonderful stuff, to be honest. And um, Chris Pels gets their deserved equalizer to Kugu Kukurte, but then, um, yeah, nitpicky penalty um, allows Richard Leeson to get back in into the game. Probably Chris Pels would have deserved the draw, but Everton hangs on for that win. Then, under normal circumstances, one would say the game of the weekend was West Brom against Chelsea, where within 30 minutes West Brom had a three-goal lead. Chelsea playing in those really not good looking. I mean, this is not Chelsea, and this is more pinkish than red, I see. Fourth minute, Robinson scores, then the second one, I mean, Thiago Silva, who played for the first time, I think he, he got even the captain's arm and just falls over. And Robinson can go clear, can go and then Bartley. I mean, horrid defending. But somehow, some changes were made. I mean, Caballero was playing and they have a new goalkeeper now. I think that Frank Lampard would need a defensive coach. Uh, offensively, I think his teams are very, very exciting, but in defense, they are clearly lacking. And there, he would need some true assistance. However, they mount a comeback. Uh, 55th minute, uh, Mason Mount gets a goal. Then Hudson Adoy pulls another one back and in stoppage time to get the equalizer. Unbelievable stuff and I think uh, West Brom will not feel happy about that. Um, my takeaway, this was probably one of the worst jerseys matchup uh, in this season. I don't like either one of them a lot. Southampton early Inks goal gets the win over 
uh, Burnley um, uh, leads United. Not much that I can say. It's only one nil. So uh, chances on both sides. Very late uh, win for Leeds United. But we gotta talk about Spurs, who dominated and pushed around Newcastle. Get the goal through Lucas after Kane. Uh, Lucas Moura after Kane assist. Should have probably made it two two nil. I think that was very very late. Um, uh, good chance. And then a handball, yeah, that by the rules. I mean, if you watch Serie A, if you watch La Liga, uh, you're not even surprised that this is given. That, of course, in England, this is a big outrage. I somewhat understand. Yes, I would not like that to be given as a penalty. However, it has been pretty consistent all over that it has been a penalty. And so in stoppage time, uh, Callum Wilson makes it 1-1. Um, I always... You know, I listen to podcasts where there's, which are kind of anglo-centric and I'm always surprised of how outraged uh, Premier League viewers are over VAR decisions. And then who makes the rules? Well, IFAB is 50% the home nations. What gives? Please, uh, you should do something and not just uh, yell all over the place. That's the one thing. Yes, this should not be a handball. Uh, same thing as with Real Madrid, but to make it such an outrage, also it was badly handled in the in the United game. Uh, still, um, watch other leagues, look where it's happening, and uh, it will not be a big surprise to you. I mean, I yes, I see those decisions are um, kind of weird, but it's not that I'm super surprised about them. Let's just say. Uh, Pro the result of the weekend, although there is another contender that I won't uh, spend too much time on, is Manchester City's loss to Leicester City. Didn't really see that one coming. I have to say that Leicester has had a great start and they continue to that. But you know, Mares gives out of uh, three minutes with a wonderful shot uh, the lead. And you think a Guardiola side should be able to play it at home. Uh, Leicester will continue to like their maroon jersey, which I think from a template. Template wise, they are re they're actually nice. I just the color, and I don't know, I didn't like black either, but the maroon really seems weird. Uh, what has to be also said, there were three penalties against City. When has that ever happened? Uh, that a, a team is given three penalties, two of which were he converts and he makes another one uh, after nice assist by Castagna, makes it 3 1 by the 58th minute, completely turns the game, game around. Madison with the Goal. I mean, the Vardy goal, I think, uh, Wolf was realized, but the Madison goal was even nice. I mean, that was nicely taken from a distance. 4 1. Ake in the 84th pulls one back. You think, yeah, maybe, 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 maybe not. Uh, penalty that Tielemans then converts 5 2. Um, I think if you take away the defensive frailties and all the penalty fouls, this could have been a draw, probably. And you know, City uh, had a lot of possession. And um, you know, 72 to 2, 2, 2 percent, but it's the back line, and something needs to happen there. The other big result, uh, that was surprising was definitely uh, West Ham beating Wolves 4 0. Did not see that coming, and given that the schedule for West Ham did was a sorely needed win, also did not see really coming that Aston Villa will roll over Fulham, but you know, that was early done with a Grealish goal, uh, so that went fine. I watched, as you know, if you watch my Premier League, uh, not the Premier Division, Spain video, I watched Liverpool against Arsenal. And I have to say, for most of the time, this was man against boys, and it was a travesty, a travesty that this was not a higher scoreline. Credit to Arsenal, they kept it tight at the back, and Liverpool's um, you know, aim was not really well on target. But everything else, I do not understand. I mean, he might be a dressing room leader, but I do not understand why Tinky Tanky Bob, uh, David Luiz, is still a regular in that side. I mean, the mistakes he makes defensively are ridiculous. Um, but, you know, speaking of defensive mistakes, the game needed 50 minutes. Then there were pretty big chances by Liverpool, by Liverpool, by Liverpool but the first goal goes uh, through, like, like I said, because Robertson makes a horrible mistake and the ball falls to, like I said, who doesn't even hit it, right? And it's 1-0 Arsenal, but within um, 10 minutes, Arsenal can't, can't turn around Mane uh, after 
uh, you know, again, a nice attacking move and the, the ball falls to Manet who just needs to put it in. And then Trent Alexander-Arnold crosses over to Ro Robertson who is clear and can make up and makes it 2-1. Should have been 3 if not 4-1 at the half. Liverpool really, really dominating Arsenal. Similar in the second half, although it was not as much dominant. I mean, the first half by, by Liverpool was uh, great to watch if you're Liverpool fan or if you just like uh, intense soccer because Arsenal could not breathe. They were pressed as soon as they had the ball. And uh, what I don't understand is that they always want to play it out from the back when I don't think this is the best strategy, to be honest, uh, because you, you just need to punt it down a little bit to give yourself a little bit of breathing room. Uh, in the second half, though, despite all the chances that Liverpool had, there were two clear-cut chances for Lacazette who could have made at least 2-2. Two -two. Undeserved as it might have been, but it was well in there. Um, but also Liverpool had big chances. I mean, the biggest one was when uh, Jota was in a better position and Salah takes the ball away from him. This is Salah, it is most frustrating. Uh, but Diogo Jota gets his goal, although in the replay later there was a little bit of a handball there. We did not let it get look, looked at, but overall Liverpool fully deserved 3-1 winners. And yeah, if they would have had the shooting boots on a little bit more, especially if Salah had a little bit his mind, Liverpool could have shot themselves on the top of the table. But the way it stands, it is Leicester City who, thanks to many more goals scored, have pl uh, three goals more than Li Li Liverpool are in first place. Liverpool now ahead of Everton, but their level on points is just Liverpool has scored nine versus eight goals. Aston Villa uh, finds themselves with four points and uh, nah, six points already. Two wins out of two games. That is rather surprising. I'm looking at the wrong column here. You can see I'm tired. Uh, and also Arsenal and Crystal Palace are up there. So it's very interesting. I find it rather disconcerting that both Manchester teams are kind of so-and-so, though City still uh, looks odds on. West Ham United with that point makes a big jump, but let's see how where the, 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 this will go. I'm especially surprised about Sheffield United, who played a good season last season, and now are already second favorites to get relegated. So that might be of uh very look at champions league spots leicester city is already in third here and liverpool just ahead of manchester city i mean they already have yes they have a game game, uh, game here but a three to six point lead um you city needs to get this win let's put it that way first uh if you look at the next round i'm not gonna deal with the league cup until we are late in the competition i'm not even sure that because for me this is a competition that should have been cancelled this season to, to be honest, player overload. It's my keyword. Everton Brighton, after Brighton's performance and Chelsea Chris Cross Palace, kind of interesting. I want to see what Leeds is going to do against Manchester City. I think that screams game of the weekend if there wasn't a United Spurs, but honestly, I don't expect a good game there. So I actually think that Leeds against Manchester City, that sounds like a really, really fun game. Eredivisie, as I said, I didn't see much. Ajax gets a win over Vitesse. Um, Rotterdam, Feyenoord, of course, uh, gets a good win against Ado. But honestly, 4-2 um, seems like not enough. And the PSV is dropping points against Armelo. AZ, who have um, a game less, but also only getting a draw against Sittard, which is a team that you would expect them to beat. So, you know... If you look at the table, Ajax is already in lead, Herrenvein, uh, it hangs in there also with only one uh, nil lead, so they are co-leaders uh, on top of the table, uh, Feyenoord is just behind and PSV also now. Feyenoord and PSV have been lose, losing points and so you need to beat Ajax to get on there. Uh, if I look at the next round, uh, Groningen and Ajax would be such a great matchup. If Arjen Robben was playing, other than that, it's kind of, yeah, I think the pick would go to Willem Dwey against Feyenoord, but Willem Dwey is also not all that great. So, that was for me for last week of the Premier League and Air, last weekend of the Premier League and Eredivisie. Let's see how this goes, thanks to the national break, will be done. We won't have Monday games. Yay, I actually like that. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. 
Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!